Welcome to this edition of Open SCAD by DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to be taking a quick look at this. It's a dust adapter, which I've come up with. Uh, if you've been kind of following along, I've done a number of things on the dust collection system. And one of the things that I had done is I had built a table, or not built, but actually purchased a tabletop vent system. Uh, to capture sawdust in, and again it starts with a four inch opening roughly 101 millimeters as you see here and then I want to adapt it down to an inch and a half diameter so one of the things that I needed to do interestingly enough and that's one of the reasons I decided to do a video on it is I need to go from uh, basically providing an, an inner diameter which is this because my dust shield has an outer diameter which this will fit over but yet I need to convert to an inner diameter so this will this opening here will enter into um, a 1.5 inch coupler and so the other piece that I want to do is I want to 3d print this but yet I don't want supports because I want it to be all open like this so I need approximately about a 60 degree angle on this cone shape so um, what I decided to do is whip this up in OpenSCAD because actually I found myself to have a little bit of a need because as I have different machines I want to be able to print one of these without going through all the re-engineering effort. You know, so if I did something like this in Fusion 360 or Tinkercad, you know, I'd have to rescale for all my devices, uh, you know, that I want to attach this to port-wise. But with this, I just simply changed the numbers. Now, what I've done with this is I've created a module down here, as you see, uh, down adapter. And what I do is I've designed it to receive a number of variables. Now, while I'm not using them as direct parameters, I have listed them uh, in the parameter section here. So we see what we have. We have base diameter, ID, or inner diameter. We have base height. So the, in short, if we look over here on the um, image, so base height is this height, and the diameter is obviously the diameter of this wall is wall thickness. How thick are we going to make the walls? Uh, cone height is the height of the cone and this will yield the angle now I did not create um, where where you put in an angle and I, I've misspelled height so don't beat me up too bad um, so um, uh, my point is is I, I basically just do a calculation on height and just say you know roughly this angle looks about 60 degrees and that's fine if you want to get more particular you could probably build something in and I may do that in a future video too uh, the other piece is tail OD so now I come up with the outer diameter here of the tail and then obviously height of the tail stock and then true or false on the um, centering so pretty straightforward to create this object and again I can just alter one of these variables that I pass in the module now one of the pieces that I want to really point out uh, is a couple things so I've talked about this before in, in prior videos and it's about tr how do you translate up so I'm a fan of using center equals true for for round objects and, and so this is basically a round object so uh, but one of the things I like to do is I like to translate up so you'll notice that really we have three parts here so we have the first part which is the base so if we go and we take a look at this so one of the things that we do is we translate up half the height of the base because normally what will happen with center equals true is it will be centered on all axes is equally in the middle so by going up by only one half I am setting this at the bottom of my XY Cartesian plane on the Z axis Ooh, that was a mouthful but I think you get what I'm saying now one of the things is I go and I look at the cone shape here and we look at the cone so we see how the cone sits on there and what we have to do is now we have to go up the full height of the base plus half of the cone you see what the pattern that's starting to form here uh, so an important one and then thirdly finally when we get up to the tail stock or the very end piece the smaller piece and we take a look at that is what we have to do is we come up the whole base the whole cone in half of the tail and so this is what gives us our whole translate up mechanism from uh, 
basically the zero on, on the Z all the way to the top of the object and we bring it together. Now naturally with this whole piece we do a union to bring it together uh, which is I think pretty common or you know I, I don't think you'd be surprised in that but one of the things that I do want to do do want to do again with that do want to do I don't know where I get that from I think it's my my six-year-old grandson he says something like that so um, anyways what I want to point out here is uh, plus wall so because it's an it's actually an ID, an inner diameter. You want to add the wall to it. But when we go down here and we take a look and we say this is an outer diameter, we have to invert it and subtract the wall. So as you see up here, when we create the base object, what we do is we just take the tail OD divided by two because we want to pass it a radius. And then when we create the hole, because what happens is when we end the union, we create another smaller version of the same thing to difference out. Because we see we up here we have our difference. So in the bigger structure, so we have our difference. We have our union to create our main structure. And then we start the subtraction of the difference. And then here what we do, as I mentioned, we subtract the wall thickness. So this is where it gets it gets rather interesting is is you know from going from um, ID to OD in this design model and that's one of the big things I wanted to show you guys too is is how do you switch because a lot of times you go OD to OD ID to ID and you know in the cases where you go uh, OD to uh, sorry ID to OD or vice versa you have to make sure you keep track of the wall thickness and you invert that or else obviously you're going to come off with an error the size of your wall thickness and, and that would be a good thing in, in engineering the part so anyways um, I think we've covered out a lot of the logic and construction constructing this I'll spit that out and so um, I think you get the idea again for me this is a very handy thing I see this being used a lot I've actually got a couple of these queued up uh, to be printed right now for different machines because one of the things I want to do is I create this 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 ID to slip over the OD of the machines dust dust ports and then use this to connect this tailstock to connect to a 1.5 inch um, uh, you know uh, coupler so that you've seen in probably some of my other videos so with all this being said Let's jump over. Let's watch a time lapse that's being printed because this is kind of really cool. Uh, it's a rather big object because uh, obviously it starts at about four inches diameter and closes down to one and a half. And in short, we, we print it with no supports and we print it midair in this exact configuration. So uh, kind of cool to watch. And then after we do that, we'll actually kind of watch how it goes together uh, in the video. So let's jump over to the printer, time lapse, and then closing thoughts as we show how it all works. Alright, so here we are. We've taken a look at this in OpenSCAD. we looked at the code. We've watched it uh, print in a time lapse, and here's the end product. It turned out very good. Um, again, no supports, 20% infill, uh, 0.8 millimeter shells on each side, so 0.16 out of 2 means there's only 0.2% infill. So this is pretty much, you, you could probably almost do this as a solid vase type type print. Um, I decided to do it with shells because I wanted a little bit more rigidity to it, so um, rather than just uh, a vase. But anyways, it turned out fantastic. So let's see how it actually fits. Just like a glove. Slides right on there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take this coupler, slide it on top of there, which is nice fit. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take epoxy and then actually glue this on. And then what will happen is this hose, my dust collector hose, will fit in there and it will be a pressure fit. And so I can just unplug it and plug it, it with inside this, this plastic connector or coupler. And this will actually have one on it too. And I, I, what I may do is actually do a 90 on here. 
and uh, anyways, but you get the idea how it goes together. And again, this is a great example. I think as you can see in a real world, uh, you know, use is we had we had an outer diameter, you know, an OD here, which we wanted to create an ID to receive, and then we had an ID that we wanted to be received into an OD and have that adapter. Plus, we wanted to be able to shape a cone so we could, you know, have a nice taper for the flow of um, material in there, plus print without supports. So, as you can see, I mean, whoops, look how nice that is if I, if I get it in focus here. Um, so, I mean, this really turned out great. So, nice, nice funneling action in here, you see. So, anyways, this is one of the things I love about OpenSCAD, and one of the big uh, purposes for this channel is to kind of really show what you can do in the real world with OpenSCAD instead of just playing around with it and, and that kind of stuff. You can actually make real things with it. I know we see a lot of things with Fusion 360 and I do some stuff with Tinkercad and you know those are all great programs too but I really enjoy um, uh, OpenSCAD because the other piece is I'm going to make several of these. As you can probably see in the back I got my uh, Delta bandsaw, so I'm going to make one of these to go on here so I can adapt to this size hose and hook my Delta bandsaw up. Uh, my chop saw out in my wood shop, I'm going to connect it up um, because I just use a, a real big shop vac out there to, to drive that stuff there. I'm going to make one to connect it up to there. Uh, so again, I see a lot of uses uh, for this type of connector in just day-to-day -day use. So anyways, hopefully you found this edition of OpenSCAD interesting and useful. If you did, hey, please give it a thumbs up. It really, you know, shows that you're watching, you're interested. If you got questions, hit me up in the comments below. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, I do these on a regular basis and hope you enjoy them. Cheers and see you in the next one.